As we move along the line into collective circuitry, it's really important to remember that this circuit group is kind of split down the middle. On one side of the body graph, you'll see that there's the logic circuitry, okay, and it's collective because it's all shared. And on the other side, the side we're going to cover today that runs through the solar plexus, you have the collective sensing or the abstract circuitry. All right, so it's kind of like the tribe where it's split into the major and minor, but with the collective sensing, it's basically just two major um, circuit groups. With the collective sensing, also known as the abstract circuit group, you can think of it as the energy responsible for the movement from inexperience to experience in order to achieve progress and gain wisdom. It's often referred to as the human experiential way. It's very emotional. It involves the root center, so there's a great deal of pressure involved. And it's all about delving into brand new experiences, unsure of what the necessary outcome will be, but doing so with excitement or being caught up in a situation where you're not sure exactly what's going to happen or how to handle it. But there you are in this new experience and you're sharing it with other people. And as a result of being able to move through that experience, you gain wisdom. And that wisdom is then shared as a story or as a recollection, or again, as, as an experience that we get to gather within ourselves and share amongst our people. Okay. And again, it's really important to note now that we're moving away from the tribal circuitry and into collective, that they're very, very, very different. Okay. No longer are we concerned with the support and survival and stability of our tribes? We're now moving into the impersonal. Okay. Tribal is very, very personal. It's your family. It's your business. It's your, um, you could even think of it as like your team or your sports league or the people that you root for, the athletes that you root for, right? That you consider as a part of your tight knit uh, tribal grouping. It's the people you can smell. It's the people you can touch. When we move into collective circuitry, it's very impersonal. It's about the whole of humanity, right? It's about large masses of people. It's about the sharing of experiences. It's about being able to engage in forms of, you could call it collective interdependence in a way however it's not the same as tribal because tribal again is so about the close-knit bonds of between the people that you know and the people that you can touch and the people that you can directly interact with collective is much more about the impersonal okay it's much more about sharing information with the collective whole for the benefit of everyone and I think maybe that's a really good one there to, to be able to differentiate between the difference between the tribe and the collectives. The collective's main concern is the collective whole. Okay, it is about sort of everybody. Whereas with the tribe, it's like your own personal family or your own personal grouping. It's not necessarily concerned with the sum total of humanity. So just to review the tribal circuit before we move into the collective abstract circuit. Like I mentioned before, tribal the tribal super keynote is support, demands assistance, demands reciprocity, it demands loyalty, bargains, uh, business, things, materialism. The senses are touch and smell, okay? So if you have someone who's very tribal in your life or you yourself may be very tribal, there's a necessity for the exchange of support in order for there to be a sense of peace and success within the grouping. Okay. As we learned previously, the tribal circuit is broken down into two component circuit groups. There's the major ego circuit. Okay. Which involves the root spleen and the ego itself or the heart center and the solar plexus and the throat. And then we have the defense circuit, which is the minor circuit, which involves the sacral spleen and the solar plexus. 
One is all about business structures, entrepreneurialism, capitalism, and being able to come together in common social bonds where we support each other in order to nurture the preservation and well-being of our children, of our offspring. So again, in review, the ego circuit drives our competitive nature in business and the fulfillment of our families and communities basic needs. Tribal energy connects us to our roots and traditions, pressuring family and business members to support one another financially and materially. Physical interaction and access to resources are essential for the tribal circuit to achieve a sense of success, peace, and satisfaction. It's essential that to, to, to realize that if there are inadequate resources within a tribe, it can lead to resentment and anger. Again, because the tribe basically measures its success and its satisfaction based upon what it has, right? The 45th gate at the top of the tribal ego circuitry is a very possessive energy. It's the gate of I have or I don't have. So it's all about having things. And when the tribe doesn't have what it needs, well, it can become angry. It can become bitter, resentful. Uh, envious, right? You'll find the 27th gate um, first line is the there in the detriment is the theme of envy. Okay, so like kind of envying what other people's other people have when you yourself may not have it. Okay, and sort of jealousy and competitive uh, nature that can often so be seen in this tribal circuitry can come across as aggressive and demanding of resources. The tribal ego circuit collaborates with the defense circuit, as I've mentioned before, to ensure material security and community well-being vital for raising and protecting the young, sick, and elderly. Moving right along from the tribal circuit group, like I mentioned, no more are we dealing with the theme of support where materialism and the engaging the engaging process of nurturing and caring for and making bargains with our community is the primary emphasis that's no longer the case with the collective the collective super keynote is sharing right it's sharing it's not owning it's sharing the more the merrier right the more experiences that we can gather and collect as humanity the better, right? More, 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 share, share, share. And it's all impersonal. And it's all about getting an experience for the sake of having the experience as it is associated with the collective sensing or abstract circuit. Okay. So you can think of this entire circuit group as being something that's felt, you know, like what does it feel like to climb Mount Everest? right? Not what's required materially. Remember, that would be the emphasis of the tribe, not the support that's required, but what does it feel like to have that experience? What does it feel like to have a desire to climb Mount Everest and then actually be able to experience that? A longing, an imagination for it. Okay, it's another big thing like imagination, longing, desire. These are all keynotes that are uh, fundamentally a part of the collective abstract circuit. The senses are rooted deeply in our visual capacities. Uh, specifically, you'll see the 11th gate here uh, is the gate of the left eye, whereas the 17th gate is the gate of the right eye. So these are the eyes. So it's very much so about what we see during our experiential endeavors and how we share information that other people can then take in visually. Of course, the solar plexus is involved in the feeling awareness process, but the senses are primarily around what we see and what we take in visually. And what we remember about the past in terms of our visual recollection of what happened the collective sensing abstract circuit represents our longing and, and desire for interpersonal shared experiences, growth through cycles of maturation and development, okay, and the collection and eventual sharing 
of our gained wisdom with others as either stimulating stories or tales about the past. This circuit group, unlike its mirror circuit group, Collective Understanding, which is on the other side, okay, which is its mirror, they're literally basically the same in terms of their relative positions within the body graph, just on the opposite side of each other, okay, is not concerned, so this circuit group is not concerned with the stability and safety that predictable predictable patterns based on formulas provide. It is geared more towards newness, adventure, and delving into the unexpected with the expectation that the journey will yield the reward of excitement and help to overcome a sense of boredom or stagnation. Here is where we will find the deepest themes of crisis, change, and discovery in the body graph, something only this circuit group is fully capable of handling. The tribe is rooted in its traditions and hierarchy. Logic is held stable and secure through repetition, forecasting, and analysis. And individuality is prepared to make a contribution based on its knowing at a moment's notice. Yet none are as capable of stepping forward into the total and complete unknown with excitement and expectation as that of the collective sensing circuit. It really is like a propellant that launches us into new experiences for the sake of gathering new experiences and is often sort of filled with expectation and hope and desire that oh if we do this thing together it will lead to this result but there's absolutely no guarantee that it's going to happen okay but this energy will propel us to try to give it a shot to go out there and to to engage in something new even if it means having to deal with crisis. Meaning, being in a situation where you haven't, you don't actually have a logical solution for having to deal with it. You have to come up with something to be able to navigate a chaotic situation in the moment. So the famous saying, onward through the fog, is a perfect motto for this circuit group. This circuit group runs between the root, okay, the solar plexus and the throat and the root sacral g and throat all right and then the head ajna throat so as you can see it's quite complex there's seven channels 14 gates it's the most uh, amount of quantum that we've covered so far again ha having broken down the tribal circuit group into major minor so it's incredibly complex and dynamic and revolves heavily around the powerful wave dynamics of the solar plexus. Meaning again, this circuit group is all about feelings. It's all about desire. It's all about a longing and an imagination for what could be with a hunger for progress, driving us to engage in new experiences and committing our internal resources to go out and experience life for what it is. And eventually trying to make sense of it all and share our ideas in a stimulating way with others such as a historian recollecting the past you can think of it also as different from the logic because with the inclusion of the solar plexus and the fact that it has a manifesting channel okay um, there is a built-in capacity to actually manifest and take action something which logic does not have because as you'll see when we go to the other side in the in the weeks coming logic running through the spleen and the spleen not being a motor is heavily dependent on either the 58th gate or somehow these fo the format energy and energy from the power column eventually making its way through our leadership in order for anything to actually take place and be done um, this is this is why again this this circuit group can be incredibly powerful because it can drive us and move us and get us interacting in new shared experiences quite easily in a way right logic requires this experimenting proving solving working on things until they're perfect okay before an experiment is actually released into the collective whereas the collective abstract sensing circuitry is just out there doing it 
It's out there experiencing things under its own power. And again, you can see this exemplified in people you know, especially if they're manifestors with the 3635 or the 1222, and they have this, um, I'm mentioning the 1222 because it's also a manifest channel, but really the 3635 design of jack of all trades, you'll see that in people who carry that kind of frequency, that they have this inbuilt motor and capacity to engage in new shared experiences and initiate others to join them. Again, so here the collective has the opportunity to try something new before it has been fully tested, which may lead to a situation of one's expectations, the satiation of one's expectations, or leave them feeling disappointment and unfulfilled when things go awry. So running between the root, the solar plexus, and the throat, you will find the stream of feeling. It represents the pressure and longing desire for progress and change that will always have to deal with a crisis in order to successfully complete its journey. Referred to as the human experiential way, the stream plays a critical role in propelling humanity forward based on feelings of expectation, excitement, and imagination. This stream carries a deep sexual overtone, different from the 59.6, however, as we covered last week, as the collective sensing process is all about collecting new experiences for the sake of the experience, not necessarily as a bonding strategy. Here we see the imagination and desire to go from inexperience to experience in order to make progress and feel the joys of satiation, none of which is logical, predictable, or something you will truly be able to get a feel for until the experience has been had and you take the time to reflect on what has been gained or lost. And that's a big thing to remember too with the circuit group. It's like, it's awareness process is all in anchored in reflection, right? The collective predicts into the future. The individual knows what they know in the now moment. And then this collective sensing abstract circuit is all about reflecting on our experiences from the past. Okay. And reflecting on what it felt like to go through those experiences. And of course, in the reflective process, you gain a deeper appreciation of whether or not the experience was worthwhile or satisfying or, or led to a greater sense of success or, or peace whatever your signature may be. And again, remember this stream is emotional. It is never fully certain about what it's about to get itself into. The best it can do is feel its way through and try to get a sense of what's coming over the horizon, but it will never be a hundred percent certain, nor will it be able to predict with some sort of logical accuracy. Again, that's the job of the logical circuit what's going to happen. So it's very hard to predict what's actually going to happen when you set off and embark on an expedition to climb Mount Everest. You can, you can prepare and you can be as logical as possible, but what happens midway up and there's an avalanche or a crisis? You know, how are you going to deal with that? How are you going to continue to push onwards and persevere in the face of unexpected challenges? Well, that's the, that's the role of this energy. Again, is, is perseverance in the face of unexpected challenges. Running from the root to the sacral, to the G, and eventually making its way up to the throat is where we see the joining of what are called the format energies. So if anybody's unaware, these three channels at the bottom here are called format energies. If ever you see them in someone's design, they have an incredible impact on the way in which that person's energy functions. In fact, they actually condition the entirety of their body graph. So for example, if someone had the 5342, which is the channel of maturation and design of balanced development, basically everything about them will be cyclical. It will come in cycles. There will be, they're basically be stuck in this process of beginnings, middles and ends their entire life. And of course, you'd have to analyze that as per their design. But the general truth 
is in fact correct that if you see this kind of energy in the format it conditions the entirety of how all of the other channels operate in someone's design it's very powerful So this is again where you see the joining of the format energies with what's called the power column. And if anybody has uh, delved into any kind of BG5 or family penta analysis, you'll note that this is actually the, like in the Neutrino Design app, if you look at your family penta chart, this area is where um, you'll see all those activations. They're given different keynotes in the context of that form of analysis or interpretation, but uh, the energies are actually based on the gates that are here. So unlike the other two channel pathways, um, the ones that run from the root solar plexus to the throat or the head to the throat, this pathway is not technically considered a stream um, as it does not pass through an awareness center, which is another really interesting thing to note about the mechanics here is that committing ourselves to cycles of maturation and persevering no matter what, trusting that we're gonna be in the right place at the right time and gathering experiences that we eventually share as wisdom is not connected to an awareness process directly. It's more of a, a response and um, a sense of direction that's eventually communicated, but it's not guided directly by an awareness process. Rather, this energy represents a pressure and availability to mature through cycles of development or what has or what has begun eventually comes to a point of completion and achievement and we get to reflect on what was learned along the way. Combined with a deep capacity for commitment and perseverance along an abstract journey where discovery and serendipity are the rewards for sticking with it and not giving up when the going gets tough or things don't make sense or go as planned. Ultimately, this energy expresses from the G center to the throat center through the channel of the prodigal design of a witness as the been there, done that experiential leader. There are three forms of leadership, which you'll come to understand by the time we get through all the different circuit groups. One is based on experience, one is based on making a creative contribution in the now moment, and one is based on, I have a logical plan, follow my plan into the future, being the alpha, okay? This is more of a, a reflective, here's what I learned, here's the secrets that I gained, let me share them with you, so that you may learn from what I, I myself went through personally. And again, if you see someone or if you know someone, or you may actually be 1333, know that, especially if it's conscious, know that you're here essentially to be someone who's recognized in some way, shape, or form, depending on how it shows up in your design, as an experiential leader, or a leader that can provide wisdom to other based on what you yourself have gained as wisdom from your own shared experiences in the past. Now, moving up to the top, because I know we haven't spent a lot of time yet, discussing um, this stream. So running from the head through the Ajna and then down eventually expressing through the throat is the stream of sensing, which represents a much different energy than the other two circuit pathways as here we are now dealing with the realm of the collective mind. It's no longer about emotions or an availability to persevere now we are in what Ra would call the toy box, okay? We're in the conceptual, analytical mind, the mind, the realm of the Ajna, where concepts, mental pressure, and abstract recollection of past events as visual images, remember I mentioned the senses as visual, so it's a recollection of past events as visual images that run through our mental thought process, all work together to form shared ideas, beliefs, and stories about life and its many wonders and spiraling interconnected relationships. As with all energy in the circuit group, this is a mental process that operates based on a recollection and piecing together of past experiences, such as a historian sharing their perspectives on the events of World War II through their stimulating and visually depictive interpretations, which would mostly happen through the context of the 1156. It is important to keep in mind, however, that these stories 
and recollections and depictions of the past, no matter how stimulating or convincing, cannot be relied on for the facts, okay? Which is the job of the collective understanding slash logic process. Of course, they can be blended together in someone's design. You can have someone with a very logical mind on one side and a very abstract mind on the other side. And in the way in which they express their unique truth, it will come across as a blend of both. They may be very good factual storytellers, okay, rather than just pure storytellers without any facts involved. But if, if you look at it in isolation, think of it like a storyteller recollecting their version of a past experience to share with you in, a, in order to either convince you to believe what happened or simply as a way for them to offload their own mental pressure so that they can feel more at peace within their own mind. So yeah, the greatest relief for someone with a mind like this is to be able to sort through the confusion and come to a place of realization, sharing their newly formed ideas with another in a stimulating way to help offload their own mental pressure. Key thing to remember, this pathway does not involve a motor center. Ideas are not generative actions okay the head is a pressure center but it's not a motor energy like the root is the root actually carries a fuel uh, again the biological correlation is of adrenaline and the, the solar plexus of course is a motor with its wave-like functions and the sacral is a motor so these pathways have a ton of energy in how they're able to actually express themselves whereas the mental process okay like for example if you're a, a, a mental projector, you know that you, you know, this, this energy that between the head, the ashram, and the throat is not motorized. Okay. So again, if you're a mental projector, the simple way of thinking about that is that you're here to be an outer authority, a pure outer authority. And yet what one says is not necessarily backed by the capacity to do or take action. It's much more about communication and sharing in a stimulating way what one believes or what one has experienced. The collective shares history so that the children don't have to start fresh. Okay, so we, we keep a record of what happened in the past and we share this record through our textbooks, through our movies, through our interviews, through our documentaries, okay, through our stories so that each new generation doesn't have to start from scratch, that there's a record of our progression as humanity and it is open, openly and freely shared for all to be able to absorb and experience. Again, it's a really fascinating experience, <laughs> talking about experience, really fascinating experience, believe me, to run people's charts who you know relatively well and see whether or not they have this kind of energy and then to observe how they speak, to observe the kind of languaging that they use and the kind of um, verbiage that they use and the way in which they talk about themselves and their relative experiences regarding the past. All right, so that's the three circuit pathways. Again, we've got the one, it's all about feeling, desire, moving through crisis and inexperience to make progress and gain experience. And then we have the pressure to mature and commit, ending up trusting that we're gonna be in the right place at the right time to eventually come out of the entire experience as, as the witness of it all, able to share our experiential uh, wisdom and leadership. And then we have a mental process that's doing its darndest to make sense of what the heck just happened. And I think it's, you know, it's funny to think of this energy as like, believe me, believe me I have no idea what just happened okay or believe me i have an idea about what just happened okay but of course as i mentioned before it's kind of this like process of sifting through um visual information and trying to make sense of and piece together events based on what you remember from a visual perspective about what happened but um, it's not the same as the collective logic with its formulas and its opinions substantiated, substantiated by details and hard facts. It's more about, well, from my perspective, this is what I believe what happened. 
okay? Doesn't mean that it's wrong or incorrect, by the way. So it's not to say, wow, anybody with this energy has no idea what they're talking about. In fact, they can be exceptionally gifted in their ability to accurately recall the truth about what actually did occur in the past, okay? And be able to express that in a way that uh, represents the authenticity of past events. It all depends on how it shows up in their design. So this would be a good time to mention or comment on the conditioning impact of this energy. So of course, as with all circuit groups and as with all gates, channels, centers in the body graph, you may have areas in your design it's almost guaranteed that you have areas in your design where you're open and susceptible to the conditioning impact of this energy and what you'll notice about the collective and especially the collective sensing circuit is it's all about being conditioned to engage in new experiences okay so you can be susceptible, open and susceptible to being conditioned to engage in new experiences that you yourself at a true self level may not actually be equipped to handle or may not be correct for you. And yet, because it's collective and because it's uh, sort of like an en masse humanity kind of energy, we can be swept up by a collective crisis and conditioned to respond and persevere and go through processes of maturation and development even when it's not in our own design okay so of course that can lead to all sorts of situations and how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about the experiences that we've been through in the past as a result of conditioning through these energies it can also show up as being overly identified with other people's experiences rather than your own, right? So you may be overly identified with some famous actor and their personal collective shared experiences when, in fact, you yourself have not been through those same experiences, okay? And of course, that can have an effect on our emotions, that can have effect on our mind, and it can have an effect on the way in which, of course, we make decisions, okay? We can be influenced. We can be drawn into something that seems attractive or feels like a great idea or something that's worth believing in. But again, like I said before, it's different from the logic circuitry where you have this guarantee of the pattern and the security and stability associated with the logic's rigorous approach to getting things perfect it's more about being like i said swept up into an experience okay and this is especially true for those who may have undefined or open solar plexus is being easily swayed emotionally by the storytelling and beliefs of others Okay, uh, at one level, it can be you can you can feel potentially overwhelmed by the sharing of other people's experiences or the feeling of being in an experience that doesn't feel very good. Um, or again, the wisdom potential there is to is to know who um, or what experience is inappropriate for you personally to to share and engage in. Okay, and that's all. Again, we would recommend deferring to your inner your strategy and your inner authority in determining what new collective shared experiences are correct for you as an individual to to move forward in think about again the conditioning of finishing what you start or the conditioning of persevering in the face of unexpected challenges which has a lot to do with bonding it's interesting in um, the mandala you'll see on this side, the 29th gate, the gate of perseverance, the abysmal, the deep within the deep, is right next to the gate of sexuality, which we covered last week uh, for the tribal defense circuitry. You can see that commitment and bonding are paired up right next to each other. 
okay? So there could be a deep conditioning here to commit to your bonded partner when that energy may not be there, okay? May lead to a deep frustration in how that energy is experienced. Again, you'd have to analyze that on a chart-by-chart -chart basis. Given the fact that there's no truth in the now with this kind of energy, it's something that can't really be understood until you've gone through a cycle with that partner or a process of growth and maturation with that partner to even gain clarity on it. It's like, uh, what's the example in the textbook? You can't change horses midstream. Once, you, once you're in and you're with Within a collective shared experience, you're in, and there's no getting out until it's over, right? It's like once you get on the plane, you don't get off until it lands. You know, there's a beginning, there's a takeoff, there's a middle, there's cruising, and then there's an ending where you land. But it's not about jumping off halfway through unless you're into that kind of thing and hopefully have a parachute on, uh, which is which is probably what the uh, jack of all trades is interested in doing, right? Jumping out mid mid flight and uh, skydiving. Very exciting. I don't know if anybody here has done that before. I haven't, but it, you know, but I'm not a jack of all trades, so not as hungry for that kind of experience as others may be. Okay. All right. Before I move on to the channels uh, or the center of the channels. And this wonderful example, uh, another famous person from history. Are there any questions, uh, feedback sharing that anybody would like to, to open up to? Please feel, feel free to speak if you wish. Hi, Life Force. This is Holographic Bagel. Hey, good morning. Um, good morning. Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, <laughs> super big fan of your work here. I had a quick question. The... Um, I, I, I was trying to sort of parse through what you were talking about in terms of, you know, that side of it, the sensing abstract visual side being defined versus undefined. And, you know, for me, I have like zero of that, of any of those channels on that side or even any of those gates. So if, if I'm, if I'm looking at that correctly and, and from what I heard you say, um, you know, I need to sort of probably be more aware of how I'm conditioned within the collective versus sort of how I present within the collective. Um, am I am I reading that right, or are there other sort of you know blind spots I need to consider for myself? Consider you know that since I don't have any of that defined at all. And you have an open solar plexus too, right? It's it's undefined. So you have a gate in there. I not not in this circuit, but I do have uh, I do have a gate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that would be a primary thing to first look at is the emotional conditioning. It would like so the the emotional conditioning to share in a new experience when really you're kind of overly nervous about it, or or the nerves aren't. How do I say this? People with undefined or open solar plexus in the context of this energy can be conditioned to participate in experiences that are not actually correct for them. Good or bad, I'm guessing. Good or bad. And the feelings and the reflections and the, and the impact of, again, impact because there's a manifesting component to it on your own personal satisfaction being a generator can be severely, maybe not severely, but can be affected. Okay, so it's like, you got to be careful in getting swept up by a friend's desire to go on a trip when your chakra response is kind of like, mm, yeah, not really for me. Okay. But you can be easily persuaded and conditioned to believe that it's a good idea or to believe that the experience will lead to a sense of your satisfaction, even if your chakra response is saying no. Um, also, you okay. can think of it as there's no, there's no inbuilt, impetus or necessarily a drive to engage in these collective shared experiences more so for you just to wit be a witness or a passenger to them 
Uh, so you can become extremely wise in the context of this energy rather than being someone who's all stuck, um, sort of caught up in a process associated with it. Um, you know, for okay. example, me, in my design, I'm a 4130 and I'm a 56. So I have this feeling process. I have this recognition process that's deeply a part of my nature, right? It's like this emotional sensitivity and kind of a longing and an imagination for new shared experiences. And with the 56, I've got the gate of stimulation, can't you tell? Right? Mm -hmm. so, he so here I am stimulating you all and sharing you all sharing with all of you my, you know, stories about human design. Okay. And you can kind of see how that energy manifests in the context of my own nature, but it would just be to recognize for you that it conditioning in the context of new shared experiences may not necessarily bring you a sense of your signature. Um, it's also a place where you can become exceptionally wise in your perception of what happened in the past you can almost see when you have fixing in a chart meaning that there's definition it means that that person is sort of locked in to the way in which they're going to perceive things so again using the 64 47 11 56 as an example this mental process of recollecting and realizing things and being able to share or a perspective about what happened in the past someone with that energy to find they're going to have a fixed way of being able to express that energy it's going to essentially be limited okay uh -huh. when there's nothing there or there's an openness there can be a vast capacity to take in many different perspectives and many different interpretations of what happened in the past about how to make sense of things, about how to gather the wisdom from a previous experience and use that wisdom in a productive way so that you know how to handle a situation more effectively in the future. Got it. And since I have a, you know, a bunch on the other side of the understanding circuit, um, I guess I just probably just need to be aware of that in terms of how it mirrors or plays off of the other side, which is completely open. Yeah. And so the, if you've, you have a lot of logic and the logic remember is concerned with predictability future forecasting stability safety security and being able to trust in formulaic patterns in order for it to feel collectively stable kind of like again using just one example of how collective shows up or logic shows up in our collective experience is the invention and implementation of traffic lights okay so logic the logic of a traffic light stopping one lane so that another lane can go through so they don't crash in the middle okay logic is like yes we must do this in order for this not to happen and in order for this to be able to occur safely and it's all based on formulas and it's all based on rigorous testing and experimentation Whereas the collective side has none of that, right? There's no, so think, think about your design, your design being more logical. You're looking to find, you're looking for the formulas. You're looking to be able to express a skill. You're looking to be able to utilize your attention to detail, to be able to do things in a repeated fashion so that you can achieve a predicted and anticipated outcome, right? Um, mm -hmm. Logic is like very strategic oriented. Of course, you can have people with, you know, passive logic activations but just generally speaking logic is very strategic in its approach to things whereas the collective is a lot more messy okay it's a lot more mm -hmm. unpredictable so okay cool well i, I appreciate that I, I i hopefully someone else got some benefit out of that that answer but that that really helped me thank you very much you're welcome um i had one question but maybe it's more a question for gates and channels so let me know if you want to answer it after <laughs> well sure if is um, it about yeah go ahead well i was just wondering like what um if you just have only hanging gates in in the circuitry what kind of effect that has so if you don't have a channel but only hanging gates yeah so it would 
of course depend on which one i'll use it's it's a really good example with the if 53 13, for example <laughs> which one sorry if you have only the 13 but not the 33 so the 13 is the gate of the listener so that would be an energy where someone's identity has a lot to do with listening and collecting what is referred to as secrets okay so it's like collecting mm -hmm. collecting 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 through listening whereas the 33 is actual actually the 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 speaking and the sharing in a moment of retreat what one has gained mm -hmm. and what one has learned you may be listening to people your whole life and filled with all of these different secrets about other people's lives and yet you may never actually have the chance or the opportunity through your own design to share them mm -hmm. okay so and it, the the opposite is is equally true where if you have someone who's got the 33 they have the outlet for sharing their wisdom but they may not have actually gained the secrets or gained mm -hmm. the wisdom that would substantiate someone as a, an experiential leader. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So if I, for example, have, I have the whole channel, mm -hmm. but if I'm with someone who only has the 13, is that like annoying for the other person? <laughs> It, well, it could be because that would be called the compromise where you're compromising mm. them um, because it's like you have your own experiential perspective as someone who has been there, done that, and you have your own way of speaking on the wisdom that you've gained. And yet they may be just always subject to listening to you talk about what you experienced in the past or you know or your approach mm -hmm. to to making sense of things and how to deal with the future um, with a greater greater <laughs> of wisdom. so they may be subject to always listening to you talk you <laughs> maybe that that's an easy way to, <laughs> to think of it um you know again if everybody's in their lane that's not a bad thing at all you know if they're a listener they're meant right. to, they're designed to be a listener they're designed to to take in the experiential wisdom doesn't necessarily mean it's their role or their place to share with the collective through speaking what it is that they've uh, taken in. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe you can mm -hmm. ask them, sorry, like, are you tired of listening to me now? Or like, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. And tie it back yes. to their, their type too right mm. so it's like mm. if, if they're a projector and they're focused on you if you're having like a projector projector conversation maybe they're more apt or inclined to listen to you right if they're a manifester and they have a closed and repelling aura with the 13th gate maybe they're less open to listening to your stories and more concerned with their own personal trip right mm. So there's you add in that context of of understanding to help make sense of yeah. how the energy expresses okay yeah great question though and it is it's the same applies for all of them like um i was going to use the example of the 5342 because again it's a format energy that represents sort of the nature of this entire circuit group and people with the 53 are designed to be starters or designed to be there to help to begin things, right? So if there's like a new project, that's a really good kind of energy to have in the group because they bring this drive and this impetus to get things started, to get things moving, to put all the pieces in place that are necessary in order for people to be successful down the line. But the 42 is where you actually get the energy for bringing what has been started to a point of completion. And so if they have the 53, but not the 42, such as the case with myself, they, they're more apt to start things, but may not be able to finish things on their own, right? They more, may be more dependent on other people in order to finish what they themselves have been invited in or um, responded to starting. And the opposite's also true. You People with the 42 can be stuck with things that they never get out of 
because they're always finishing it, always finishing it, always finishing it, right? There's no new thing to come along to help them break free from the old cycle. Um, again, you can interpret each one of those gates in its combination uh, by reading them individually. And if, if you have the definitive book of human design and you go through the channels, uh, you'll see on the right-hand column there that there will be a breakdown of each component gate. And near the end of each description, it will give you an example of what it is like when it doesn't have its partner or its harmonic partner on the other side. So you can see how it all kind of works out. Well, I had one more question, but I don't know if you're going to do more questions at the end. Oh, go ahead. Now's a good time as well. Okay. So I was also wondering when you started the session, you were saying like the tribal and the collective is very different energy. And uh, someone close to me has like exactly equal amount of tribal and collective um gates channels and i was wondering like how does that work together if you have like an equal amount of those two since they're so different it's what makes being human so fascinating <laughs> right because like you're making a great point here is where because we're exploring all these different circuits in isolation and I'm stressing, mm. I'm stressing the differences so that from an educational perspective, you can begin to differentiate the qualities of the energy. But of course, yeah, you get, you get a mixture when you look at people's designs, right? There's there more often than not going to be representation in a person's design between all three circuit groups even if it's just mm. a single hanging gate it's usually there right. you can usually find it if someone is predominantly an equal blend between tribal collective well you may find that they have very close familial business connections and they're also sharing themselves with the collective or engaged in collective experiences that are incredibly mm. impersonal so right yeah. half the day they're at home with their family doing tribal things and the other half of the day they're out with the out sharing themselves with the collective mm, yeah, and you know maybe sense. their business tribal business is all about sharing themselves with the collective right yeah you see it's they're they're mm. woven together and again that's kind of the artistry of of analysis yeah where you, you look at someone's unique design and you say, wow, again, using Orville here, because he's on the screen as an example, he has mm -hmm. collective logic, collective abstract, and an incredibly powerful individual energy all within one person. Yeah. Right. And he has, again, gates in all of the other circuit groups too. Look to see which channels they have. And mm -hmm. you can, if you, if you pay attention, especially as a projector, you'll begin to see this, um, this dynamic life. And again, that's the kind of the wonder of what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Great question. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to continue now, uh, going through the, just the centers that are a part of this, the circuitry and then a quick rundown of all the different channels and their major keynotes that you can kind of get a grasp and remember too it's funny when i was learning human design it was kind of made it was it was reinforced that you basically learn about these different circuit groups through the context of their nature meaning most of what i'm sharing with you today you're not really going to make sense of until maybe a week, two weeks, or a month from now. You know, tribal, you really get tribal when you give somebody a hug or you make a breakthrough at work and you're recognized, okay, or support or demand on your will or your ego is called, all right, 
So it's like you, you'll really begin to understand these energies over time as you yourself go through processes of reflection, exp experience, reflection, sharing what you remember, okay, trying to make sense of things that happened in the past, right, and then sharing your interpretation of that with somebody. So we learn about these different circuit groups in the context of how they actually show up in our real lives as well. There are seven centers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven involved in this collective abstract or sensing circuit group. The root carries a pressure to begin and to imagine the 41. It's the gate of imagination, gate of longing, okay, cyclical decrease, kind of like the seasons, sort of maturing and growing through processes of seasonal change and cyclical new beginnings, okay, and it pressures humanity to share in and to begin in new experiences every single day, every single year, every single decade, okay? The sacral brings an availability to finish and persevere, okay? So the 42 is the gate of finishing and the 29th is the gate of perseverance. The G center brings its themes of love and direction. And in this particular circumstance with the 46, gate of pushing upwards, this is the gate of serendipity or trusting that you'll be in the right place at the right time. And then through the 13th gate of the listener collecting secrets or collecting information, which eventually gets shared with others as wisdom. And I mentioned the 46 too, because it's, it's another example of how different the collective sensing process is to that of the collective logic process is the 46 gate says, look, I have no idea where I'm actually going. I'm just trusting that I'm going to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right people. And serendipity will take care of the rest. And it's like a, a deep, well, think of it, think of the keynote pushing upwards. Okay. So you don't, it's not saying I know where I'm going. It's pushing upwards. You're just pushing upwards. You're, you're committed, you're persevering, you're engaged in a process that requires an availability, okay, to succeed where other people may have failed in the past. And it's all done through these deep shared bonded experiences. The throat center again represents our energy for retreat. The third gate of retreat and reflection where we share our spoken reflections and then a hunger for progress and change as is um, represented by the 35th gate okay 35th gate fourth line is the gate of hunger an insatiable drive for progress solar plexus is a nervousness and desire for experience slash crisis in it and um, a sense of inadequacy. So it's like a nervousness of, oh, I'm experientially inadequate, so I must go out and have a new experience, or I'm experientially inadequate and nervous about having a new experience because I haven't ever experienced it before. Okay, so there's like this deep desire. The 30th gate is also the gate of the fates. So it's coming into contact and accepting your fates and dealing with crisis as crisis shows up in your life and having either the emotional fortitude to handle it or being overwhelmed by nervousness okay because the collective abstract process like i mentioned before can be very messy it can be very unpredictable and can come in a moment's notice where all of a sudden we're all swept up into this collective shared process with absolutely no warning and yet we're in it okay so the head pressures us to kind of make sense of confusion and help us to make sense of what happened. All right. So it's like you're going through all these emotional committed bond relationships and then the mind's job is to try and conceptualize and make sense of what just happened. 
right? And then to share and recollect its stories and its its ideas with others. And of course, the Ajna, with the 47th Gate of Realization, has the task of being able to actually, okay, now I realize what happened. I have an idea about what happened and let me share it with you in a stimulating way, such as a storyteller recalling events from past history. So all together, again, it's a pressure for emotional experiences and availability to be in the right place at the right time, ultimately sharing our experiences as a leader or as a prodigal, as someone who's been there, done that. All the while, the mind is tasked with trying to make sense of what all just happened and share that story and that perspective with others as a stimulating story or a recollection. <clears throat> So the channels, again, the 4130 channel of recognition, a design of focused energy, is the imagination, desire, and potential for new experience. So the 4130 is the fuel for the potential. Okay, so it's like about getting really excited about the potential of something happening. And then the 3635 is the actual experiential talent where they try anything and everything defying all logic, okay, in order to become eventually a design of a check of all trades somewhere who someone who has been there done that and if you have any 35 36s in your life take a look at and ask them about all the different things that they've tried out in their life and whether or not any of them actually fulfilled their expectations okay because it's this particular stream can become overly concerned with the fulfillment of expectations when really it's just about entering into a new shared experience for the sake of it, okay, and doing your best to hold on as you persevere through that journey. The 5342, like I've mentioned before, channel of maturation and design of balanced development is all about entering into and completing a full cycle of an experience, right? So this is not an energy that will jump ship halfway through a voyage. It's an energy that is willing to be there at the very beginning go through the growth and the pressure and the challenge of finishing things so that eventually it can come to the end of and complete a whole cycle. So again, if you see, if in a practical sense, if you see this in somebody's design, let's say they're engaged in some type of developmental educational process, it would be very important for them as a generator to, in order to feel satisfied to be able to finish what they start doesn't always mean that they will, doesn't always mean that they can. Of course, remember this energy requires a collective approach, a shared approach to, to experiences. Um, it requires other people, okay, in order for the cycle to be completed successfully. You know, they may have the potential, but again, they have to be in the right environment and engage with something that they're actually available to complete in order to get their signature in order. Other interesting thing to note too, people with the 5342 or the 2946 as a channel, of course, will by definition be generators. You know, so projectors, manifestors, and reflectors are not designed to have the energy for finishing what they themselves start. They're not designed to have the perseverance and energy for being in the right place at the right time on their own okay it's only the generator and the sustainment and stamina and power of the generator that has the energy to actually do this or embody this by themselves projectors manifestors reflectors will always experience those themes in partnership and in connection with other people making the correct invitations and those that you share your time with, uh, even more important, okay? Just a really interesting thing to note. 2946 channel discovery, design of succeeding where others fail or failing where others succeed is the energy to persevere with a determination no matter the challenge. Thirteen thirty-three channel of the prodigal, a design of a witness, is the experiential leader who knows that life does make sense in the end. Okay, and there's a. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of a. 
it's an approach to it's like an ecological i don't know ecological solutions called permaculture and there's a the man one of the man men who founded it uh bill mollison if you look him up and if you look up permaculture i'm ne nearly certain he was a 1333 and there's a number of really good uh lecture series he was an australian gentleman actually i think he's a new zealander but he did live in australia as well uh, a number of amazing lectures that he gave at um, Australian universities that were recorded. And he's a 1333. And if you just listen to the way in which he weaves together his lessons, again, he was quite famous for his contribution to the whole permaculture movement. You'll notice, wow, there, there truly is a 1333, a design of a witness, an experiential leader who knows that life does make sense in the end and has been there, done that, and is now fulfilling his role as a teacher and a guide for others, right? Um, yeah, really fascinating, man. And I uh, highly recommend checking out permaculture for any of those who are interested in that kind of uh, sustainable uh, building practice. Not just building practice, but... Um, sort of lifestyle and, and growth and regenerative uh, practices for the planet. He was quite a force. So channel 40, uh, 6447, channel of abstraction, design of mental activity mixed with clarity. This is again like a mental pressure that has a sifting through a kaleidoscope of mental images to make sense of the past. Again, if you have this in your design or if you know someone with this channel quantum in their design, just watch how their mind operates from the outside. See what it is that they end up sharing, okay? And see where at times they may come across as confused or confusing with moments of, you know, a mental activity mixed with clarity. It's most of the time, it's like this mental activity that's kind of doused in confusion and abstraction with moments of clarity and realization where it's like oh okay now i get it now now i know what happened or now i can sense get a sense of and realize why that happened to me in the past okay it needed to happen in order for this to happen and so on and so forth 1156 channel of curiosity a design of a searcher this is energy that's always seeking new ideas and stimulation and learning so the 11th gate is the anxiety of there's nothing new to learn, right? So the 11th gate is always looking to absorb a new learning experience. And it's also the kind of energy that can be exceptionally good in teaching and communicating complex ideas to others. As you will see in, I think, the 11th gate fourth line, if you read that line in particular, it speaks heavily to the nature of this energy and how it can be so adept at being able to explain ideas and concepts to others again teaching through education and sharing like a storyteller which comes primarily through the the throat function of the 56 okay so yeah 14 gates seven channels it's a lot of energy it's all about being able to feel our way through experiences and to derive the benefit of gained wisdom that's the benefit is gained wisdom as a result of our collective developmental um, endeavors. Okay. So I'm going to move along now to, like I said, a really wonderful example of someone who carried the format energy of maturation and design of balance development in their design. Uh, this is Orville Wright, who those those who may not uh, know this, Orville Wright and his brother um, invented the first flying aircraft. They um, and particularly, it wasn't just the fact that they were able to um, get this motorized aircraft off the ground. It was this three axis. Uh, control mechanism that they had uh, invented that's actually still in use today so that it could actually be uh, an aircraft could be controlled during flight and not just essentially be like a hang glider okay so yeah i'll share a little bit about his life and you can see how prevalent this kind of energy was and in, in the way in which his life unfolded 
So Orville Wright, born August 19, 1871 in Dayton, Ohio, was an American aviation pioneer who, alongside his brother Wilbur Wright, is credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. Orville's developmental achievements, developmental achievements in aeronautics have left an indelible mark on modern transportation and engineering. From an early age, Orville exhibited a keen interest in mechanics and was an avid experimenter. Together with Wilbur, he opened a bicycle shop in Dayton, which provided the funds and workshop space necessary to pursue their growing interest in flight. It's another really interesting th thing to note about him being a 14-2, so the 14-2, and when we get to individual circuitry, you'll see this, is all about having your own inbuilt capacity to work as an individual in order to gain money in order to gain resources and him and his brother actually open up a shop a bicycle shop and use their own funds to sponsor their own research they were not they were not granted money by the federal government initially uh, in the experimentation and production uh, initial trial and error phase of their endeavors they they funded their own research and they funded their own developments just an interesting thing to note, out, note about his design. The Wright brothers' persistent research in aeronautics led to their development of the three-axis control system, a pivotal breakthrough that enabled the pilot to steer the aircraft effectively and to maintain its equilibrium. This concept remains a standard on all fixed-wing aircraft to this day. Despite personal setbacks and public doubt, Orville, along with his Wilbur, achieved this historic first powered, controlled, and sustained flight on December 17, 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Uh, Orville piloted the first flight that lasted 12 seconds and covered 120 feet, a modest but monumental feat that would ultimately reshape global civilization. Global civilization. So here is someone who carries the energy for maturation and balanced development and the quantum to persevere within his design and along with his brother he was the first to develop the three axis motorized aircraft that actually worked orville's perseverance was particularly evident following a discouraging series of failures and crashes Again, remember the abstract experiential way, there's no guarantees, and it's also often filled with crisis. Undeterred by the skepticism of their uh, contemporaries, Orville and Wilbur pressed on with their experiments. Orville's dedication was tragically underscored on September 17, 1908, when a crash severely injured him and killed his passengers, signaling the inherent risks involved in early flight testing. And it's interesting because if you actually look at his design, he has the 42nd gate, third line, which is the line of trial and error. Okay, so the thing to note about the maturation developmental process is that trial and error and things work not working out the first time around or even a crisis or a disaster occurring as a result of jumping into something completely new and illogical and unpredictable is almost guaranteed. After Wilbur's death in 1912, Orville continued to contribute. It's an eighth gate, gate of contribution. Continued to uh, contribute to aviation, focusing on innovations and advocating for the industry's potential. He witnessed the transformation from the early canvas and wood contraptions to sophisticated metal aircraft, understanding the vast implications of their work for both civil and military applications. Orville's legacy extends beyond his technical accomplishments. He and his brother's shared collective contribution embodied the essence of innovation and the spirit of the American dream. The Wright brothers' approach, systematic discipline, and coupled with a relentless persistence, became a temple for research and development in the 20th century and beyond. So again, here is a wonderful example from history of someone who carried the energy for maturation, balanced development, and perseverance okay and i thought it was also interesting to note that he's got the the 30th gate the 56th gate and the 47th gate and it's kind of like he has a desire and a belief to realize light 
And how is he going to do that? He's going to enter into a process of development and maturation that will require deep perseverance and the allocation of his own personal resources in order to feel satisfied. Yeah, so it's always an interesting process to go through and, uh, and find people um, in my library who kind of embody this kind of quantum and use them as examples because it's just like wow okay so there there it is someone embodying a very collective developmental energy so remember too like he his his development was shared remember the primary keynote the super keynote of the collective circuitry is sharing his development was shared with the collective right he shared the three access control flying aircraft invention with the collective that had a radical impact on our modern day um, civilization right they still use that 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 basic principle even in the planes that we fly in today those mo like modern boeing and airbus and jet fighters and all that being able to control pitch yaw and roll right so that you can actually like keep an airplane stable that was a, a result of his and his brother's work and commitment and going back to Anna's questions earlier like what if you get a if you get a mixture of the energies and of course this is another great example where you have a mixture between the collective abstract the collective logic and the individual empowerment um, so here's someone who is empowered by his availability to develop a collective contribution that it has been rigorously tested by the demands of logic and the expression of details right so he took a very methodical logical approach and at the same time it was all kind of uncertain and he his uh, like I said, the federal government never funded them until they actually showed off in front of, I think it was like the French or something at a big um, air show. And every, the French were so impressed. And finally, the, um, the American government uh, decided to fund their research. They were, they were funding other projects, but none of them had been successful, again, because of their particular um, invention with being able to control um, how the airplane uh, maintained its stability during flight. As I'm getting your chart here uh fibonacci is there anything from that particular sharing that really resonated with you about the collective um sensing process of course with 4130 you'd be emotional by definition emotional inner authority um anything you care to share about your sort of wisdom that you've gained through your shared collective experiences i feel like i got an understanding of missing the 36 in my actual chart um, as the reason why I will walk up to the front of the line of any roller coaster and then start freaking out as soon as I get strapped in um, and like not wanting to actually go up and like wanting to bail at the top of that choice. Um, so I feel like that was the resonating uh, idea of it that really landed as something new today sort of the emotional inexperience nervousness coming up like oh oh god i've never done this before how do i handle this yeah and the 35 yeah if i've done the coaster before no problem but if it's brand new i'll have the courage to get up there and want to get the group in line and wait and then as soon as it comes to like all right choice is up i have all the the butterflies and whatnot of having made that choice and standing and committing great i'm just pulling up your uh chart here right so so this is your design can you confirm this is you you got 36 you got the 41 30 and 30, 35 hanging Yes, that's looking right to mine. Right, so and this is another interesting thing to note about all of the circuit groups, and especially in the context of, of shared 
experiential energy is that when you have something like uh, the 4130 unconscious, it's to recognize that you identify with having the voice for progress and like, okay, I, I feel like having a new experience. And yet the imagination, the drive and an impetus is kind of like at an unconscious level, almost like this is the force that gives you the emotional fortitude or bravery to step forward onto that roller coaster that your personality is calling out for you to try and yeah. experiment with. And yet um, at an unconscious level, the the drive and the desire to share a new experiences is something that your, your personality won't necessarily ever be able to identify with, which makes um, makes this as an inner authority process even a little bit more challenging. Um, I personally can relate to this because I have both gates and my solar plexus um, are unconscious as well. But um, of course, emotional definition, clarity is something that happens over time not jumping into an ex a new shared experience without first giving yourself a little bit of time to feel into whether or not you actually have the appetite and hunger for that new shared collective experience. Um, and let's see, moon, Venus, unconscious second line. So it's kind of like a daily drive in the context of your relationships to be called out to share in new experiences and maybe having the longer, the fantasy and the desire to do so. <clears throat> You're a generator, right? <clears throat> yeah, manifest generator. Right. So it's something for you to observe. It's like, um, do you feel satisfied in your collective shared experiences that you're called out to engage um, and participate in? And also, this is another good thing too, being <clears throat> actually having this emotional definition in your design something that Ra used to teach, and I think it's so true, is like not to grade your score, meaning you're bound to go through these collective shared experiences, and it is what it is. It's never going to be perfect. Um, this is the kind of emotional stream that can be filled with unconscious expectations of what you think should happen or may happen. And yet what actually does happen more or less will always be slightly disappointed compared to what your imagination may be able to conjure up, you know? So it's like, um, and also with the 4130, it has, it operates in the context of this, um, crash wave, the collective circuitry. So it's like, you're building and building and building and building expectation. And then when you finally get the experience, there's a release of the energy. And in a way, this whole stream is never fully satisfied until it's gone through the entire process, until it's actually had the experience. And even in the having of the experience where progress is made, there can still be a sense of disappointment and failed expectation. And yet with that knowing and with that knowledge, you can, allow things to be what they are and allow the messiness of this whole collective shared process to be something that's just fine. Not trying to be overly uh, perfectionistic about things. Cause I don't think you have a ton of logic anyway. Um, I think I'm mostly in up that center channel. Yeah. Yeah. I won't show your whole body graph by the way, in the, recording but so i'm just okay. looking here um but yeah you know very open on the other side right so very open to the conditioning impact of, of the logic's tendency to want to have everything perfect it's almost as though you're much more equipped to jump into the unknown and have an individual experience that brings you the satisfaction of being able to express and make a contribution as a result of a desire and a feeling and a longing to do so. Yeah, I'm definitely going wander by myself at the music festival because I had to buy a ticket when I saw the lineup and then getting there, there's so much to see. There's so much to do. I'm a walk up by myself. That definitely resonates from, from those experiences. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And just mentioning too, you got, this is, um, 
just for your own personal um, knowledge is again both mm -hmm. channels that you have running between this the the root and the solar plexus are, are red they're unconscious to you so this yeah. whole emotional waiting for clarity it's going to be a really difficult thing for your personality and especially your mind to ever really try to figure out it's more about um bodily feelings and and trusting your sense about things and trusting your your drive and your desire to share new experiences and giving yourself a little bit of time to feel into it and again not trying to be caught up in some type of overly perf perfectionistic approach which um I wouldn't even necessarily say that you are because that usually only happens when someone has like a hanging element here, especially the 18, um, mm. you know, it's more about just accepting life's experiences as they are and um, deriving as much wisdom and benefit that you can from the progress that you make in the context of your relationships and other people calling you out. So this is the other thing too, moon, Venus, mm. second line, people are definitely going to call you out to join in their new shared experience and it's for you to respond or not yeah before um finding human design i was a big oh sure and then would have bad times and oh well i guess they're not for me and just have a weird cutoff line about what i do and what i don't do and why so i feel like i have a lot more to play off from being more aware of some conditioning some stuff that's in me and all the beautiful stuff that human design gives us access to. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I hope you found that. Helpful. Thank you for your time. All right. How are you doing today, Ori? Doing great. Uh, just got up, stretching, reflecting, consuming your insights, your wisdom. So that's what I've been doing lately. Yeah, I'd imagine. Reflection is a big part of your, your nature and your design, you know? Um, yeah. So, you, so you do have a channel, unlike the defense circuitry uh -huh. last week, we can see that you do have channel representation in this collective cir uh, sensing group, uh, between the head center and the Ajna, uh, channel of abstraction. And remember, like I said, during the lecture, this is the kind of mind that's sort of constantly sorting through images from the past to try and make sense of what happened, happened so that it can realize for itself the truth behind past events. So I guess the question would be, do you find yourself sort of pondering the past a lot or having this experience of mental imagery flowing through your mind, trying to... Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, I think... I always reflect on the past of my life, but mostly to learn from it and to grow from it. And I think that's where people be like, wow, like how are you so wise and how you can just break things together. It's like, that's what I do. Like I just take time to reflect and ponder. Like, okay, so this happened and that happened. What did I learn from it? Okay. Then I just proceed from there. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's spot on. And <clears throat> I'd also say too that this sensing abstract collective um, circuit group is a big part of your design, given the fact that your personality son is in the thirteenth gate of the listener. You know, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like deeply emotional. Been there, done that. Been through the crisis. Been through the transformation. Been through the change collected all of the wisdom through listening to other people, constantly sorting through and trying to glean wisdom from the experiences that you've had in the past that you can ultimately then share with the collective as a five, right? So it's, yeah, definitely the, the role of the listener and absorbing information and absorbing everything you possibly can from from an experience so that you can have it as a resource in the future to call upon as like sort of a point of wisdom, you know? Um, I, I Also, I should mention here, and this is another big thing that applies to 
to anybody who has a uh, mental definition, that is definition between the head, ajna, or throat, is that, of course, the mind or the this area of the body graph is never the inner authority, right? It's always an outer authority. So even though you may, you know, certain days be dealing with a level of confusion and, um, you know, just because you're confused mentally doesn't mean that it's correct for you to necessarily make a decision based on that mental abstract process, right? The decision making comes from the emotions, comes from the defined solar plexus being the inner authority. You know, it's kind of, it's the process is like you're feeling your way through things and you're recollecting the past and eventually structuring and sharing those insights with the collective. Yet for you personally, it's like no matter how well you make sense of things or no, no matter how well you explain yourself, it's like always going back to, okay, how do I actually feel about it? What would it be like to actually have to go through an experiential process of being in close proximity with another person or other people and how would that make me feel, you know? And um, is that feeling gonna gonna result in a sense of satisfaction or not, you know? But just, just to note that again, the mind is never an inner authority, it's an outer authority. And um, it can be a great mind, right? You got the 63-4 as well, I know, and the 43-23. You're kind of blending together the past with perspectives on the future into a structured insight. And that can be very empowering when you share your mind with the collective, but just not to, uh, yeah, not necessarily make decision based on what you say, but more so on how you feel, you know? Mm -hmm. Something to ponder. And, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to that one. Yeah. It's like your mind is for, especially being collective, right? It's like you're here to share your mind. You're here to share your mental process and how you think and how you mm -hmm. conceptualize and how you communicate with the collective. Right? You have a very collective mind. Um, and the fact that, again, it funnels down through the 4323 in your design that realization is, is shared as a structured insight, you know, that's kind of your role in a way, you know, you can share what you've, you've gained through experiential wisdom with the collective. Wow. That definitely resonates. It's like I got nothing to say. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, also, maybe the other thing I could mention, too, is kind of like Jupiter. It's interesting. Um, none of the channels in the collective abstract circuit group that we covered today... <laughs> Or what, or what are called uh, oppositions, where you'll see them show up in the nodes as channels or in the sun earth as channels. They're always dependent on some kind of odd configuration between other planets coming together in the mandala to bring them, bring them activation. And yet it's an interesting thing how um, both of your Jupiters have come together to form this channel. So in a way you could say that your personal law and where you experience expansion is where you can, is when you can make sense of the past and share the wisdom that you've derived from the past with the collective. Um, you know, and you're going to be able to do that in a way that I can't. I don't have the 6447, you know, I just, I know what I know mm -hmm. and I can explain what I know, but this this capacity that you have to be able to ponder and recollect and analyze past events and and derive the wisdom and the benefit and the value of having gone through those experiences and then share it with people as useful advice like you know it's kind of your 
your domain. Mm. Wow. <laughs> he wanna sound so dope. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pretty cool. Eh? I also have another um if you don't mind answering. My mother, my mother has like the hanging gate thirty three. Yeah. And I have the gate thirteen and we click, you know, create a electromagnetic connection. I'm just wondering how that goes about. I would give like an accurate like, interpretation. Um, I'd have to see her design, but generally speaking, again, you're the listener and she's the one who probably is has a private life that's really important to her. Thirty third yeah. gate is the gate of privacy. Um independent of each other, they have nothing to do with one another. It's only in the forming of the channel where you get the, the quantum mix, right? But um yeah. uh, Basically, anybody that I've ever met with 33 are generally private people. Um, privacy and retreat is really important to them. Um, and maybe, and yet maybe when you are able to connect and share with her in kind of like a private situation, that's when all the outpouring of the experience come through. Is, and so what did you learn from that, you know, and what can you what can you gain from that experience and what was that like for you to go through that and um yeah that's kind of what i would say about it without looking at the chart directly i would say again you're more like open to listening to what the collective has to say and generally speaking she's probably the one who's more private um it, it's funny it's funny cuz it's like a dichotomy where it's the, the 33rd gate is the gate of privacy, and yet it's also taxed with being an, a collective leader ship kind of energy. So it's like, and I've seen politicians with the 3313 or just the 33, right? Where they're, they're tasked with this collective leadership role, and yet they have a, a, a private side to their life that they never share. And yet the expectation is that it's the outlet for shared collective wisdom. So how that all works in the end, I don't know. It's a, it's a complex interdynamic, but would you, would you consider your mom like as someone who enjoys her privacy and if for a treat? Oh yeah. She, my mom's definitely an introvert. She loves to just be, she, she's such a homebody person and just, um, yeah, she just need her time and space. <laughs> and I feel like she always be the one that comes to me. She's so expressive. Um, she always comes to me like, guess what happened? Or I remember this and da 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 da. And I always be the one just sitting back and listening every time. There you go. So it's a dynamic. That's awesome. Yep. Again, if I if we had our chart, but we won't run it today. Uh, you could see see if it's uh it's defined i think i can i think i can try pull it up if that's um i just don't want to waste anybody's time yeah maybe we can look All at right. it in private speaking about private yeah at another time okay. especially because you're you know i don't want to start you running your your mom's chart without her consent um <laughs> She's a private you lady, you know. <laughs> All right. No, she, she don't mind when it comes to you. She's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But I'm, I'll definitely uh, DM you. All right. Cool. All right. Did you have any other questions, Ari? Mm -mm. I got what all I, I got. Uh, what I need. So, like. Ori, you do have a channel representation in the circuit group. 1333. All right. The channel of prodigal, sign of a witness. So again, this is sort of the experiential, the voice for experiential leadership. This is kind of a voice that in a moment will be able to share its experiential wisdom with the collective. Um, 
And in many ways, people may look to you for your capacity to recollect on the past and, again, derive some sort of nugget of wisdom based upon your own uh, pushing upwards and unexpected discoveries in your life um, mm -hmm. as an outlet for wisdom. Um, you can also think of it in the context of your identity, okay, in the way in which it communicates in one way, shape, or another is always going to be very reflective in nature, right? So a lot of what, and I know your integration, so that does play a part into it as well, but there's always going to be like an element of the way in which you communicate, which is based on an experiential remem remembrance of things that you've gone through in the past and, 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 and experiences that you've shared with other people and maybe even a crisis that you've shared that you can, that you can refer back to as a point of wisdom. Okay. But again, when shared with others can help them to better navigate their future unexpected twists and turns that you yourself have already uh, sort of traveled down. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that about yourself? Is there, is there times where you kind of catch yourself uh, in a state of remembrance or reflection in the way you share and the way you um, communicate? Constantly. Um, even mid conversation. <laughs> So if, it make, if this makes sense, in, a, in having a chat with someone, um, and maybe it's that open ego, but I will instantly know I've got some value for this person. Um, and with my quad left brain, I disappear down a rabbit hole even for four seconds. In my world, it, it feels like 30 minutes, like it's quite a journey. <laughs> I reach into the this knowledge bucket, grab what was what felt relevant, and return to that conversation. But in those four seconds, sometimes I've missed the context, or at least in the past, if that makes sense. In the past, so, <laughs> See, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, but getting awareness of that like was huge. So it's it's very much I could tell this is one of those moments when I'm talking to someone, you know. Um, I find I'm even strategic these days. Like I will use a phrase like I remember. And as soon as I say that, I can tell the other person kind of locks in, like they're aware that something's coming. Yeah. And then that puts pressure on me to go, well, I better get this right. Cause when I don't, I get crucified. <laughs> so it's a three, five. So um, I've got lots of practice in getting it wrong to the point where I'm getting it pretty right lately with that awareness. Excellent. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Totally. And it, you practice getting things, you know, trial and error, like I mentioned before, and I said, again, being a third line, you can think of your experiential process resonating to the 42.3, the gate of trial and error. Um, I think the greatest amount of wisdom can be derived from our mistakes. I mean, if mm -hmm. we always got things right, and if we always got things perfect the first time around, there wouldn't be much room for learning. There wouldn't be much room for growing, and 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 the, and the um, acquiring of the wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what not to do. I think that's what I'm an expert at. So yeah. I'm pretty good at guiding people at what not to do. What's interesting is, like, I've been a computer consultant for thirty years, and long before I had any awareness of human design. The one thing I used to always say and, and even just try to mentor to the people that work for me was always tell people, I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And I would say that, like people would come to me for answers or I'd have all this experience, but I, I seem to always know to be careful to point out that I don't know everything. Um, because I, I guess I, I, I know I carry this sort of uh, alpha energy as well and they've got the five projected onto me so it's interesting when i look back human design has made that much more clear to me that that's what was going on but i i did have an internal knowing somehow that i was being projected upon that uh that the people were listening or i could tell when they're listening and uh the pause 
for a second and just try to get the message right because as I say, I'd, otherwise it would come back to bite me. Giving advice while I drink was never a good idea. <laughs> That's the wisdom you've derived from that experience. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Don't let, because my personality gets extra sharp with that. <laughs> or my, uh, my extroversion, I suppose. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes it's exactly right, but the wrong timing or the wrong volume or intensity. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, looking at your design holistically, I'm glad I pulled it up here because it's really fascinating. Uh, I think only on one other occasion have I ever seen this where all three leadership channels are defined in a single person's chart. Mm -hmm. So you're the alpha, the role model, and the witness all in one. It, it, it's quite remarkable. Um, and you, men you mentioned having that kind of alpha side to you, which next week when we, when we cover <clears throat> collective logic, that's where this channel would come in, which has a lot mm -hmm. to do with... Uh, the context of your incarnation cross being a seven, right? Having a strong collective role and having a strong influence in the context of groups. Um, yeah. yeah, my wife has the uh, 731 as well. Hmm. And one thing I've noticed through the last couple of years is that if the two of us are having a, let's call it a an exchange, like we think we're bantering because we've always just had a good sarcastic sense of humor other people around us get really uncomfortable. <laughs> so so we think we're having a good old little chat and people are like, whew, is it getting hot in here? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> oh, it's pretty interesting. To see that right in the body graph is uh, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely someone who has influence through their communication and doing and actions, most certainly, even if you're not, yeah. not intending to. Um well, that three five is just you know everything's been experience. Definitely uh, had a tough upbringing as far as fame and confidence, and you know I just thought I was a dummy until about a year ago <laughs> when I realized that uh, I was just driving this thing wrong. Yeah, so still again an alpha in inspiration and a prodigal. So it's quite a complex set of roles that your identity is here to communicate and. Um... Yeah, so the remembrance and being an inspiration in times of uncertainty and having a plan is kind of like, you know, in many ways, your role. Basically, having a plan, what do we do in the now moment and what can we learn from our past experiences to ensure that our future experiences are a little less trial and error prone. Yeah, how do you have a plan in the moment? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. You're the MG with all the energy behind it, so you got to trust your intuition. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's interesting that you say that because, and I think maybe again, it's that open, completely head, open head, Ajna, and the quad left. I, it take, okay, so um, I talk about this a lot. My eyes give away things that aren't there. I'm discovering to the point where I now try to wear sunglasses wherever I can. Like to, I almost want to wear them indoors and just say I'm Bono. Uh, because when I have people giving me information, let's just use this scenario, I'm at work. I've got people working for me um, so that they have to deliver me news or information. So as they're delivering, they're telling me something. Um, and, and Zoom and COVID was a big help for this because all of a sudden I'm in lots of video meetings where I can see myself in the meetings and or see a recording afterwards and my eyes are just darting all over the place and i've come to recognize that when someone's feeding me some piece of information some you know hey we've got this problem my brain can forecast two years down the line in three seconds and my face will respond to the thoughts i'm having so like all of a sudden i'll make like a, a, a you know like a stinky face right like ooh, that's gonna hurt but it has nothing to do with the information that's coming in at the moment. It's I'm already two years down the line, but seeing all the problems. So what I came to realize is people were actually adjusting what they're telling me real time. 
because they're like, oh, he didn't like that, right? Like <laughs> I've actually sensed, felt, and experienced this enough times recently that it's like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna wear sunglasses. Mm -hmm. so I don't give away all of what's going through my mind because a lot of it isn't even relevant to the in in the now, the plan in the now. I have the plan for two years from now in four seconds. <laughs> so, um, so that's been that's that's been a big one recently. And I think as you're describing your your process, it makes sense to me from an analytical perspective where you're taking in information like a sponge. Mm -hmm. In the context of the Ajna. The 11th gate and the 17th gate represent the eyes, which I find remarkable how you, it's very open for you there. So it's like you're, you're taking in all this information and your eyes are giving away how you're interpreting it. And yet again, the awareness that you have consistent is in the spleen. So the mm -hmm. spleen gives you that existential decision-making, split-second decision-making process, especially with the 32 at the gate of personnel manager, gate of continuity. So this is like an instinctive awareness that's concerned with the continuity of the business process that you're engaged in. And your intuition backed by all this power is going to give you an in the now moment plan that you can then contribute. That's going to be backed by all this experiential wisdom, having been there, done that yourself. So I think that's just kind of a fascinating thing to to recognize is, is the strength of your intuition and in being able to, in the now moment, provide leadership and direction while you're like processing high levels of information with an open filter, which I think is really remarkable. Because remember what I mentioned earlier, if you caught that part, when someone has a gate channel, et cetera, defined in their design, it fixes them to perceive things in a certain way. Right, so they're, they have kind of a um, filter in how they're going mm -hmm. to interpret the information coming in. But you having like an open filter and a very open mind, it can allow you to, you know, maybe per uh, perceive and process information more clearly. And then you have that in the moment intuitive instinct for yes or no, that'll work in the future or not. Yeah. Uh, and there's a confidence that's coming with that, but the whole time you're saying that and, and then thinking about a number of people telling me I'm quite possibly in the wrong environment, it's that three, five body of experience that everyone around me has seen me stumble. So when I'm intuitive in the now, they're like, oh yeah, we remember what happened last time. <laughs> so, <coughs> so. I just know, but it's hard to get people on board with the Sean train when the Sean train has come off the tracks many times in the past, at least when it wasn't in alignment. So it's, it's interesting, but I notice that when I go visit other places now and I show up as me, a more comfortable, comfortable and confident me, um, it's just a very different experience. But when I'm on home turf, it's, it's the shine gets dulled big time. Mm. So it's very, uh, but you know, over time I've also been hermiting quite a bit last year as part of this whole process. And, uh, yeah, when I reappear, people are intrigued, even, even friends from the past. So it's, it's almost been necessary to just disconnect and have them forget the bumbling as well. So high speed bumbling, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure very high speed bumbling, <laughs> undefined route, manifesting generator, lug out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, that's yeah. cool about 1711 being the eyes. That's, uh, yeah. That checks out. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew there was something going on up there. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much.